Well, looking ahead into 2013, uh, where, where do you see, uh, I guess, yourself, uh, the riding, and the party going? I hope in the new year that we're going to see more businesses opening in High River. I'm hoping that we will see a water solution for Okotoks. Okotoks has been striving for a water solution for some time with a new council. They've put a new idea on the table. I hope we get to see some flood mitigation that actually begins to get implemented not only in High River proper but also working with the MD of Foothills to be able to see if we can get uh, some spillways built that will protect communities more in the longer term. So those would be the, the, the main issues that, that I think we're, we'll hopefully be able to see some progress on that. And if I can lend a hand in, in pushing some of that along at the provincial level, I'm happy to. I'm looking forward already to having a a council meeting with Yokotoks Council in the new year. I'm hoping to be able to set up something in the new year with the High River Council before we return to session to find out the new priorities of councils. Things have changed. I mean, that's another highlight of last year that we've got a mix of old and new faces on council and some changing priorities. So I want to make sure that I can be an advocate for both of the needs of our three municipalities in the legislature. And I think with a little bit of change, um, they'll, they'll, they'll probably have a, a few new priorities for me to advocate on. What is something interesting you brought up was talking about uh, Okotoks. Uh, kind of not necessarily got left behind this year, but uh, pretty much left to their own devices with a lot of priority and, and uh, uh, time spent uh, on issues in High River. So uh, obviously uh, you're looking to be spending a little time in Okotoks this year just as talking to people and seeing what they have to say. What I've been really enjoyed about all of the municipalities in the uh, provincial riding of Highwood is that there's so many wonderful community events to attend and so I do still go to senior celebrations and the firefighters ball um, I had hoped to make it to the hospice gallery or a hospice gala this year but wasn't able to but I will next year but there's there's just so many wonderful opportunities to get together as a community we are right along Elizabeth Street here so we participate in light of Okotoks and we participate in the parade and we'll continue to do that but one of the things to the credit of Okotoks that they didn't get more flooding is some of the proactive decisions that the council had made about limiting development in floodways, about having pumps on hand when uh, water did end up spilling over the banks, doing some mitigation measures. And that really is a model, I think, for other communities, that you can protect a community by making some of those simple measures. So we'll see what happens in High River, but it's also been a good learning experience for me to take more broadly at the provincial level. We've got 66 communities that are at any given time at risk of flood, and I think that there are some communities that have done a, a terrific job of managing that, and Anokotoga stands out. And I think that's something maybe a lot of people don't always realize is that, uh, uh, yes, while you do represent the Highwood Riding, you're also the leader of the party, and, and you've kind of spent a lot of time getting to know issues in and around the province. So looking ahead to 2014 provincially, uh, where do you see uh, things going for you, uh, uh, the province, uh, and the party? For, for the province, it, it really is anyone's guess, because we have a premier who campaigned on a, one set of policies and, and a platform who has done the exact opposite since she got elected. So now that she's secured her leadership review and she's made a cabinet shuffle, it will be very interesting to see what direction we see in the new year. Unfortunately, she didn't change in the two most important portfolios, finance and health. So we still have a finance minister who can't balance the budget, and we still have a health minister who has made major mistakes in healthcare and can't seem to fix healthcare. So those are, uh, unfortunately, I think, going to be two areas where we continue to see a, a lack of progress. Uh, and we'll, we'll just monitor issues as they come up, but we'll, we're going to be focusing on a lot of those heart issues that we're hearing heartbreaking stories in all of our constituency offices. We know the government can do better, and the way to do better is to have a strong opposition identifying places where they're going wrong and also some solutions to fix it. So we'll be doing that. Plus, we also have our candidate selection process that's going to be starting up in the fall of next year. So there's a little more constituency building that we have to do to prepare for that, get our, our local candidate selection committees in place, and start the process of of uh, recruiting those 87 candidates that are going to be the face of the Wild Rose Party in 2016. So I'm pretty excited about that process getting underway. And we, we made some major changes this year on the policy front. We listened to what Albertans told us. There were about eight or nine policies that just did not resonate with Albertans. Our members heard that. They either deleted them or revised them, modified them or added new policies to fill some of those gaps. And I think that that demonstrates that that's the kind of party we're going to be. We'll put forward our ideas but we'll also be responsive if we've got some ideas that, that just are not where Albertans want to go. Any political party that wants to govern this province has to govern it 
with the idea of putting forward an agenda that the vast that the majority of Albertans support. So I think we've got that on our policy side, and now we just have to make sure that we've got 87 candidates who we can feel proud of on the national and international stage representing us. So you have to stay tuned for that, but that's going to start next year. Uh, obviously, again, uh, just to go back uh, quickly to uh, High River, flood recovery, uh, that's mm -hmm. going to be a, a real big issue in 2014. Go ahead. Correct. I, I have given, I think I've been uh, actually reasonably balanced in bringing issues forward in the legislature because I understand things take time but I have to tell you it's pretty frustrating that the Premier is able to make a fast-track decision to get $6,000 signs built in 7 to 14 days but she can't keep her commitment to have the DRP program working so people could get the $10,000 initial payment within 7 to 14 days which she promised. We now have way too many families who've been waiting six months and have had no support from the disaster recovery program. It's a program that is not working as well as it should and we need to continue asking questions why. So they have a couple more months to be able to fix some of these issues but if they don't we're going to be going very hard at it in February to try to get some answers for people who are who have been displaced who are still having a struggle carrying their debt on their credit cards and lines of credit who've stalled the renovations waiting to get those kind of payments we hear from contractors who did work on spec expecting that the DRP payments would come one contractor out twenty thousand dollars for work that he did and is not getting paid because the people he worked for are not getting paid. There's a lot of second and third and fourth order effects happening because of the government's inability to get this program working. So that will be a large part of our focus next year if they, if they haven't made significant progress over the next couple of months.